time ago in the Senate Judiciary Committee that we voted to advance the nomination of Judge Katanji Brown Jackson to serve as the next Associate Justice on the United States Supreme Court. In the coming days, Judge Jackson's nomination will come before the full Senate. We're on track to confirm her this week. Judge Jackson is an outstanding nominee. She's earned support across the political and ideological spectra, and her qualifications are second to none. Most importantly, Judge Jackson's record on the bench is one of even-handedness, impartiality, and independence. Despite this, not a single Republican on the Judiciary Committee would vote in favor of her nomination. I'm disappointed. Not surprised, but disappointed. As a result, Judge Jackson will be the first Supreme Court nominee in the modern era to require a discharge from the Judiciary Committee. It's unfortunate in one respect, given that she's more prepared to serve on the High Court than perhaps any nominee in living memory, even by the standards of our Republican colleagues. During the Trump administration, Senate Republicans laid out what they viewed as the standards for supporting a Supreme Court nominee. In their own words, a nominee to the High Court should be confirmed if they meet three criteria. Let's take a look at those criteria. First, Republicans have argued that you must have a mainstream, bipartisan support for a nominee. For instance, speaking out about then Judge Gorsuch, the senior senator from Texas said, Gorsuch was, quote, a mainstream nominee unanimously supported by Democrats in the past. Well, lucky for them. Judge Jackson is well within that judicial mainstream, and she has the receipts to show it. Judge Jackson is supported by multiple federal judges appointed by Republican presidents, including Judge Thomas Griffith, Judge Michael Luddick, and Judge Bruin, Bruce Selya. She is supported by dozens of conservative lawyers, former Secretary of Homeland Security Michael Chertoff, Deputy Attorney General Donald Ayer, former Solicitor General Charles Freed. She's broad support from law enforcement organizations and former prosecutors. They keep saying, oh, she's soft on crime. She has the endorsement of the largest police organization in America, Fraternal Order of Police, and the International Association of Chiefs of Police, and 87 former assistant U.S. attorneys who have presented a range of, represent, uh, prosecuted a range of criminal offenses here in the District of Columbia. Soft on crime? The prosecutors don't think so. And like Judge Gorsuch, Judge Jackson has been unanimously supported by Senate Republicans, ex especially since she was confirmed unanimously by the Senate not once but twice to be a member of the U.S. Sentencing Commission and a district court judge. In short, Judge Jackson has mainstream bipartisan support right here in the Senate over and over again. The second standard laid out by the Republicans during the Trump administration is that a Supreme Court nominee must have exceptional legal credentials. We went for four straight days. She faced 24 hours of questioning, 24 hours, question after question after question, written questions, oral questions, over and over. How many questioned her qualifications to be on the Supreme Court? None, not one. In 2018, for instance, the Republican leader called then-Judge Kavanaugh, quote, an absolute all-star, specifically mentioned he was Yale undergrad, Yale law, impeccable credentials. Judge Jackson passes that same test. She clerked at every level of the federal judiciary. I can tell you as a lawyer that to be a clerk for any judge is a great honor and distinction. To be a clerk at all three levels of the federal court, including the Supreme Court, is extraordinary. It just hardly ever occurs. It did with Judge Jackson. She served as a federal public defender, staff attorney and a commissioner on the Sentencing Commission, lawyer in private practice. Her resume is absolutely star-studded in terms of legal experience. And for almost a decade, she served on the federal bench, handling some 1,100 matters, issuing 600 written opinions, do you want to know what she thinks about an issue, how she thinks about an issue? Just read the written opinions on every type of legal issue imaginable that came before her. 
Altogether, Judge Jackson meets, if not exceeds, the qualifications of previous nominees, and the Senate Republicans have enthusiastically supported them. They should support her. The third and final standard Republicans have articulated for supporting a Supreme Court nominee is they must have a judicial record and a reputation of even-handedness. In 2020, for instance, the Republican leader highlighted then-Judge Amy Coney Barrett's, quote, open-minded judicial temperament, Amy Coney Barrett. Well, by the very same metric, Judge Jackson easily passes muster. Her record on the bench is clearly one of impartiality and independence. She's ruled for and against the presidents of both political parties. She's ruled for prosecutors and ruled for criminal defendants. She's ruled for employers and employees. In her nearly 10 years on the bench, Judge Jackson has displayed no political or ideological favoritism. Some people on the far left are upset that she isn't more of an advocate for their point of view. She takes a balanced approach to it. She's never allowed her personal views to influence any outcome. And she's been a model of judicial restraint. She's been guided by precedent, by fidelity to the rule of law, and an unyielding belief that the Constitution must work for all Americans. I was listening when Senator McConnell came to the floor and announced that he would not vote for her. The number one reason, she wouldn't take a position on packing the court. Packing the court. That's a question about changing the composition of the Supreme Court, the number of Supreme Court justices. There's only been one elected official in current memory, recent memory, who has changed the composition of the court, Senator McConnell. You'll remember with the Scalia vacancy, he kept it vacant for more than eight months, denied to President Obama the opportunity to fill it. And what about the issue of future composition of the court? Is that a requirement for someone to be supported by the senator from Kentucky? Obviously not. Amy Coney Barrett wouldn't answer the question. She wouldn't give an opinion. She, like Judge Jackson said, that's a matter of policy. That's for Congress to decide, and it is. Judge Jackson easily passes the three tests the Senate Republicans have established for supporting a Supreme Court nominee, and she passed the test with flying colors. She is simply put, one of the nation's brightest legal minds. She has outstanding credentials, unimpeachable character, and an unwavering dedication to the rule of law. She's smart, and it shows. Judge Jackson also has the temperament. I can't tell you how many times during the course of the 24 hours of questioning she faced last week in the Senate Judiciary Committee that I thought, that's it. I'm going to look up at that table, and she's going to stand up and say, enough. My family, we're going home. We've had it. She never did. Cool under attack, calm under pressure, solid as a pillar. She has the acumen, the skill, the kind of attributes we demand from the Supreme Court nominee. And she's devoted her life into serve, in serving her country, always working to uphold and honor the Constitution, dedicated to protecting judicial independence, advancing freedom and liberty, and making the court its work and the decisions accessible to all Americans. She told that story when she was up for the circuit court, that her opinions are long, she said, because she wants everyone to understand her thinking, start to finish, no mystery here. And she wants the people appearing before her to understand what just happened in that courtroom. Why did they win? Why did they lose? What were the issues that were at stake? What did she think about? She takes the time to explain it because she believes in the law and she wants all of us to understand and believe it and well. I'm going to proudly cast my vote to discharge Judge Jackson from the Judiciary Committee. Later this week, I'm going to proudly cast my vote to confirm Judge Jackson as the first black woman to sit on the United States Supreme Court. Let's not, in our hurry to leave for an Easter recess, and I'm anxious as everyone is to be with our family, overlook the obvious. This is a seminal moment in American history. We are breaking down a wall that has been standing too long. 115 Supreme Court justices in our history, 108 look like me, a white guy. The others representing women, representing Latinas, and others, they're, of course, very important in history. This is, too. Judge Jackson is going to be an important part of America, and she is going to inspire a lot of people, particularly young women, to aspire to greatness. She was discouraged, if you'll remember her testimony, went up to Harvard, toured it during a national debate team appearance. She liked it so much, she went back to her high school counselor in Florida and said, I think I'm going to apply for Harvard. The 
counselor said, listen, honey, don't do that. You're going to be so disappointed. Let's think about some other choices for you. She did it anyway. She was accepted and went up there knees shaking, wondering if she could cut it. She not only cut it, she set records in terms of achievement, particularly for a person with her background. Her dad worked as a school teacher, went to law school, convinced her that law was the future for her as well. She told so many wonderful stories about her family. This is an exceptional woman. She's lived an extraordinary life. She has a beautiful family. She's written a record we can all be proud of. Let's discharge this nomination from the Judiciary Committee and bring it to the floor this week. Let's make history the right kind of history for America. I yield the floor. Suggest the absence of quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Baldwin. Madam President, I've been asked to withhold the request. Ask consent. I ask consent the quorum call be suspended. Without objection. 